Hello, I am Sarah Millican and welcome to episode 36 of How To Be Champion Storytime. Uh, it's still very tweety outside, there's lots of birds, uh, it's nice and sunny, making the most of it. I've actually got a dress on today, I'm not going to show you. I'm not. <laughs> it's really comfy though. I like dresses because you don't have to work out what goes with what, you just bung it on over your bra and pants and you're done. Uh, this is, we're still in the divorce chapter, it's a lengthy chapter, divorce is not a piece of piss. Uh, so I think we should crack on. Episode 36. To kill time on Saturdays and because I needed more money if I was ever going to move out of my parents house, I got a part time job in Waterstones in Newcastle. After seven years as a Saturday kid in WH Smith's, I was surely a shoe in They put me in charge of the maps. Clearly I looked like someone who'd lost her way. <laughs> I'm not sure alphabetising ordnance survey maps helped me find it, but in my break time I'd stand in front of the self-help section. Just stand there, wide eyes, scanning, looking for any sign of a way out. The disaster film needed a hero, and I knew it was me. I had no idea what I was looking for, or even if it, if it was even there. Are there books called, Fuck, What Do I Do Now? Or... Having sex with a new man, the bits people shave these days. After a few weeks, one book jumped out. It was a less namby pamby than some. It was less namby pamby than some, almost aggressive. It was called, It's Your Life, What Are You Going To Do With It? I got to page 18 and started stand up. That's what I wanted. A slap across the face, someone beside me going, Come on, do something! Like a personal trainer for your heart. Someone in intimidating gym gear, timing your gaps between crying with a stopwatch. Someone jogging on the spot in Greg's while you take ages choosing a pasty because you can't make decisions about anything anymore. Also, which pasty would make him love me again and how could I notify him I was eating it? Then husband and I had stayed in the flat for a further three months after broccoli day. We needed to sell the flat and I suspected that if I moved out and he was in charge of readying and cleaning it for viewings, we'd never sell. Not a slant on him, or blokes in general. Blokes don't hoover unless they've spilt something and it has to be a large amount of the thing or you can just spread it round and it'll vanish. My and our husband won't mop up water spills as they'll evaporate. We were th when we were selling the flat, we booked a time for the estate agent photographer to come round. I got up got ready, made myself presentable and answered the door when he came. When I opened the door, the bloke looked at my face and said, Ooh, I've had a rough night and all, cheeky little fucker. Then husband was also my best friend. I've never done that since, same as I won't get a car with a built-in sat-nav. Things should have one purpose. I've had a separate best friend ever since, more on her later. I had stopped any contact with him that wasn't about legal stuff. I didn't think it was healthy. So when something happened and I wanted to tell someone, now one, his ex-husband, was understandably, understandably the person to tell. He had been, had been for eight years, but I couldn't tell him I needed to detach. Also, if it was a good thing, he didn't deserve that anymore. So I made a rule. I was allowed to write the text and save it in drafts. I like broccoli now. I had a corned beef pasty today. Was it the dentist appointment? If, in an hour, I still thought it was a good idea to send it, I was allowed to. I never once sent the text. Turns out an hour is the distance between heart and head, though it's much shorter when I'm running around paper chase or rhyming, picking up notebooks I need but don't really need. I think the head kicks in at a certain price, and man, stationery is a cheap addiction. I don't know anything about drugs, but I'm sure I could get a lot of fancy-shaped post-it notes for the price of a quarter of cocaine. Is it measured like sweets? Yes? Mm. And the lady pours it from big jars into a paper comb with a twist at the end? The man in our sweet job taught me how to whistle. See, they're not all paedophiles. I also changed his name in my phone to The Arse. I cannot recommend this enough. Every time I got a text, text from The Arse, or he rang. The Arse is calling. It temporarily made me giggle before I dealt with whatever shit was on offer. I decided to divorce him. That was probably the most proactive thing I did. I was sick of reacting to things. Someone else's feelings, someone else's wishes, someone else's decisions. So I divorced him. 
When you divorce someone via the unreasonable behaviour method, you need to list things they've done and date and timestamp them. I sat with one of the Elsies one Friday night, puzzling over what I could say. After an hour, I was cherry-picking the best ones. Sunday nights were empty and I needed them filling. My oldest friend, Diane, and I said I could join her and her fella at a pub quiz. They'd buy sweets and crisps from the shop nearby and sit with a Coke all night. It was cheap fun. She said sometimes her fella brought his friend from work, Tony with the big knob. He may well have been well endowed, but he was a bairn of about 20. A nice lad, but massive cock or normal sized cock. I was too fragile for anything more than picture rounds and tie breakers. Tony seemed to think that Diane and her fella were setting us up and would flirt, bless him. One Sunday, it was my turn to buy the snacks. And just as we were doing a word round, I asked my pal if I should get them out, gesturing to the Asda bag full of quavers and cream eggs. Tony giggled and said, yes, please, brilliantly making a joke about my tits. Just at that precise moment, Diane and I realised the answer to the clue. Unlikely, N-A-H-I-H, -H, and both beamed as we shouted, not a hope in hell. <laughs> and that is the end of episode 36. I hope, I hope I made you smile or giggle and I hope you have an easier rest of day. Um, take care of yourselves. Uh, look after each other if you are living with other people and, you know, stay in the house. It sounds like somebody is moving like a really heavy table, <laughs> but I'm outside. I have no idea. Some essential building work, clearly, question mark. Um, stay in the house, wash your fucking hands, and I shall see you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I like that some people tell me that you wave when I wave, so I'm waving at all of you guys now. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Sarah Milliken here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Don't forget to like, pop a comment below and why not stick around to watch a few more. I'm sure those emails or those dishes can wait a bit longer.